What's going on my fellow warriors? This is Muso Prince here with another Royal Rambling. On this video, I'm going to talk about possibly one of the best licensed video games made within recent years. No. No. I might do that for a future video. Wait, that's a thing? No, 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 no. Not any of those games. I'm talking about a licensed game for a certain Netflix original series. Oh yeah, I'm talking about the game based off of the most badass TV series of media creation, Cobra Kai The Karate Kid Saga Continues, where you take control of either the members of Cobra Kai or Miyagi-Do and battle out against thugs across the All Valley in classic beat-em-up fashion. Like usual, I'll discuss the game's story, gameplay, its pros and cons, and since it's a licensed game, I'll also be talking about the game's relevance to the show and how well it captured the show's spirits. So without further ado, let's jump right into the story. Our journey first starts off at West Valley High School where we see Hawk and Dimitri are bickering amongst one another inside of the principal's office, talking about a huge karate war between Cobra Kai and Miyagi-Do involving fiery punches and icy kicks. When asked to start from the beginning of the whole mess, you are then given the choice to hear the story from either Cobra Kai's perspective or Miyagi-Do's, allowing your initial choice of which dojo you want to play as. But since both of the stories are pretty much identical, I'll summarize the events from both perspectives in a single viewpoint. It all begins when Miguel and Sam are sent a letter from the respective other to meet up at the mini golf park, but only to find out that it was a trap set by no good hooligans Trey and Cruz along with their skeleton costumed goons. After the trap was thoroughly beaten to a pulp, Miguel and Sam return to their respective senseis with a map in hand that labels different spots throughout the valley. Thinking each other's dojos are behind this, Johnny and Daniel rally their top students as they investigate each marked spot on the map, fighting iconic and infamous characters from the show before eventual rival fights between the main characters of the dojos for Hawk and Dimitri at the mall, Miguel and Robbie at the All Valley Tournament, Sam and Tori at West Valley High School, and finally Johnny and Daniel at the All Valley Festival with an epic rematch that's almost 40 years in the making now. For whatever dojo you choose first, you actually get an interesting ending showing said dojo's triumph, only for Hawk or Dimitri to chime out how much the told ending was complete hogwash, prompting you to run you back through the story a second time as the other dojo you hadn't originally chosen, for a true ending against the mastermind of the whole debacle, John Kreese. Once you finally defeat the originator of Cobra Kai, the game ends with Johnny and Daniel accepting a truce as they walk off with beers in hand. Of course, the principal not believing a single word of Hawk and Dimitri's over-dramatized story of Fire Against Ice, the story finishes with him forcing Hawk and Dimitri to write the story to paper, poking fun at how one day the story might become a fun video game for audiences to enjoy. Even though the story itself takes place during the second season of the show, with plenty of callbacks to events from the first season, the game's story is an entirely original concept, using the source material as a fun way to run the show's characters throughout the many iconic locations of the All Valley. The way how the story is told through these almost comic book-like stills is also very fitting, considering Hawk and Dimitri as the narrators of these tales are huge comic book fans. Overall, the story has a great presentation with a simple premise for the gameplay to get behind. Speaking of which... Now buckle up everyone because there's a lot to talk about in this section as usual. As I said earlier in the video, Cobra Kai the Karate Kid- Oh my god, I am not saying that full title again. <clears throat> As I said earlier in the video, Cobra Kai the game is a tried and true classic beat em up in the styles of such games like Streets of Rage, Final Fight, and TMNT Turtles in Time. In fact, they try to pay homage to these classic games as each of the playable characters use moves from both beat em ups as well as other fighting games, taking moves from Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Tekken, and yes, even Super Smash Bros. So when it comes to how you can deal damage to your unlucky goons, you've actually got a bit to choose from. First you have different buttons for punches and kicks, each one having their own string of combos, also allowing you to alternate between the two different types of attacks. Not only that, but it also incorporates time presses to get critical chances, as well as new attack strings itself by pausing for short time between certain button presses. There's a jump button that allows you to perform aerial attacks, some characters even being able to combo or use certain attacks in midair, and like a true defense only user, there's a parry button that also doubles as a dodge button if you're moving. However, the biggest bread and butter of the combat will be your character's personal and dojo skills. As the name suggests, each character possesses their own set of skills unique to themselves, as well as a set of skills that everyone from a single dojo can use. Everyone even has their own ultimate attacks, like Daniel fittingly having the crane kick for his, but also Johnny having a very badass one as he summons a GIANT FLAMING SNAKE THAT ENGULFS THE ENTIRE SCREEN! By incorporating all these types of attacks in your repertoire, it'll allow you to build up a combo meter where when you achieve a certain rating, your attacks will be imbued with elemental damage, allowing you to dish out even more punishment to your enemies. That's not even everything though that you're limited to. 
There are items you can pick up to use as weapons like baseball bats, soda cans, and even lawn chairs to kick at your enemies. A grabbing mechanic when you walk into a staggered enemy allowing you to dish out damage up close and personal. A button that allows you to go at downed enemies to show them the true meaning of no mercy. A character swap function that lets you switch between characters mid combo. And there are even environmental attacks fittingly named badass attacks that let you do stuff like bashing a person's face into a car, roundhouse kicking their asses into a porta potty, or even- OH MY GOD! What did you say this game was rated? T for teen? Dude, a car was dropped on an enemy in the game! He wasn't knocked out, that bitch is straight up dead! What do you mean don't think about it? On top of gameplay, you're actually given a rather in-depth and kind of fun progression system located in the dojos. There are two different kinds of level up functions, one for each character that allows you to increase their stats on a personal level, allowing you to create a stat-based kind of character like a tank-based Daniel or a glass cannon hawk, and one for the dojo as a whole with stat increases that are shared amongst the entirety of either Cobra Kai or Miyagi-Do players. Not only that, but with each of the progression areas, you can even upgrade personal and dojo skills respectively, every single one containing a branching path to let you decide how you want your characters to play. This can range from damage extensions to shorter cooldowns to even status effects like stunning, burning, or completely freezing enemies. But if you don't like the path you chose, you can reset your points for a very small fee, get refunded on all points you use, and redistribute the points wherever you want them. There's even a final upgrade for each skill branch that requires you to complete a challenge before you're allowed to purchase said upgrade. Speaking of challenges, there's a good amount of side content to go along with the main story that extends your replayability after or even before finishing the game. Not only does every stage have a rating system, but there are also collectibles hidden in every stage, whereby finding these collectibles as well as getting the highest rating of S allows you to get gi and belt upgrades that can appear in stages as equippable upgrades. Even with all that, there's still more. At your dojo, there's a section called Karate Challenges, which are special missions that requires you to do certain things, ranging from beating enemies in certain ways to using certain ultimates or skills to defeat bosses that unlock even more geese and belts to equip. Overall, this is a game that completionists will definitely have a time with. But with that said, that's all for the gameplay section, as I now praise and grieve about the game's ups and downs respectively in the pros and cons. Starting off with the pros, Pro 1 is that for a beat-em-up game, it's rather lengthy. From all the footage I was recording for this video, my captured footage time clocked in at around 15 and a half hours for completing both stories, and that's not even counting the time for when I went back to get top ratings, find the collectibles, and complete karate challenges off screen. Pro 2 is that every character is detailed as well as fun to play as. Despite everyone technically playing the same with the basic controls, the differences in skills as well as each character's combo strings results in every character being able to tackle situations in their own unique ways. Whether you want to rack up combos and damage as Hawk, keep enemies at a distance with Dimitri's overwhelming crowd control, or even able to buff yourself up as Johnny or heal yourself as Daniel. Some characters even have situational abilities like Tori, who has a skill that can allow her to attack enemies from behind her, or Robbie, who can perform a jump skill that extends for every enemy you're able to hit with it. Continuing with uniqueness in Pro 3 are enemy types. Every enemy not only has their own weaknesses, but also strengths. You might have your standard skeleton goons that are mainly combo fodder, but you also have street thugs that can hit and run you, angry emos with anti-air attacks, soccer moms and mall cops who can call for backup, and even enemies like baseball and football players who can throw projectiles at you. Heck, even the bosses are heavily varied, not one playing exactly like the other. What's more is that every enemy, and I mean every enemy, has a stat intro for when you first encounter them, listing all their strengths, weaknesses, and skills that they can perform. These are not only amazing, but also really hilarious when you read some of the pre-fight quotes plastered on these intro cards, but I'll touch upon that when we get to the game and show comparisons. Finally, Pro 4, the seamless combat. I've actually had a lot of fun playing around with this game's combat system, discovering ways how I can be able to combo my skills together to rack up my combo meter. I've had my most fun with Hawk, since not only can he perform long combo attacks, but they also deal a lot of damage too, along with the pluses of him having aerial combos with both normal attacks, as well as being able to use skills in midair too. And with the praise filled pros done, now we move on to the begrudging cons. Con 1 is Combat Jankies. Even though I said I love playing around with the combat and enjoyed it thoroughly, there are some things that happened quite a lot that really broke me out of the pacing of the game. One of these is the wonky hitboxes for the characters. This happened to me a lot while I was mainly playing as Sam, specifically for her basic punch and kick combos. There will be times where I'm in the middle of a punch or kick combo, and for some reason, some of my follow-up attacks in the string would not register, even though I would literally be on top of the enemy. 
There was also some times where the ground grabbing animation would not register damage. I would literally be mounting the enemy on the ground and start punching them, but they wouldn't take any damage. Again, this wouldn't have been much of a problem if it happened rarely, but it happened quite regularly while I was gathering footage as well as off screen while I was trying to platinum the game. One of the biggest and most annoying combat glitches is off screen enemies. Now it doesn't bother me that enemies approach you from off screen as that's just a basic way to spawn them. What really bothers me though is the fact that these enemies love to take their sweet time in coming on screen. And for a game that has a dedicated combo meter, it can be rather infuriating when you have a high combo only for it to drop because your enemies aren't fast enough to get on screen. There are also times when enemies can get caught on things off screen as well. Biggest example is this one biker thug that appears in the All Valley Tournament stage who gets stuck in his spawn point off screen and doesn't move. Again, if this happened rarely, it wouldn't be much of an issue, but this particular instance happens every single time. This forces me to use range attacks from my characters to force the enemies on screen, which in itself is a genius counter mechanic, but if something like that needed to be made to counter an already in-game flaw, then maybe the developers needed to reprogram said flaw in the first place. Con 2 is the not so progressive progression. What I mean by this is that even though I praised the progression system during the gameplay bit for its branching paths, there's definitely a sense that one path is exponentially better than the other. For example, with Robbie, he has a two set dash ability. The branching path for this ability is that he can either add an additional dash on top of the base two, or he can have his skill cause a 25% slow. Now this sounds interesting, but for a game that relies on a combo system where the more hits you land increases your combo meter faster, there's really only one upgrade you should choose. Now some of you may say that's pretty biased. Okay, well what about this example for Daniel? For his healing ability, this skill branches out between a faster casting time or the ability to heal nearby allies. Now considering this game doesn't have online co-op, as well as the fact that I don't have any nearby friends for couch co-op, the path for being able to heal nearby allies is, say with me now, completely useless. And on the topic of co-op, Con 3 is no online co-op. This is a downright travesty and is the biggest disappointment I have with this game. We have games like Streets of Rage 4 and TMNT Shredder's Revenge that allow friends to drop in and have a good old time kicking the crap out of a bunch of moops. Games that Cobra Kai is in the same genre and same generation and consoles for. I would have loved to try and convince either Bracconi or Tissif to grab it so that I could have had someone to play through this game with while gathering footage, but nope, I had to travel down this lonely path all by my... lonesome. Fuck riding is hard. Now even though I've cut the game down to size with those pawns, I still enjoyed playing through it my first time around and even enough to do a second run for footage gathering for this video. However, as a licensed video game, how well does it portray the feeling of the show? In my honest opinion, if you're a fan of the Cobra Kai show, you need to get your hands on this game. This game revels in everything that the show has and does. First off, they were able to get the main cast of the show to voice their characters. Yeah, it's the boss's property, so you should be the one leaving. Okay, maybe not all of them. Unfortunately, the only cast members who came in to voice their respective characters were William Zapka as Johnny, Ralph Macchio as Daniel, Jacob Bertrand as Hawk, and Gianni Desenzo as Dimitri, while everyone else were hired voice impersonators. And while it sucks that the actors like Zola Mari Duenya and Tanner Buchanan didn't reprise their roles, the VAs who had to capture their likenesses did what they could. Heck, I thought Mary Mauser reprised her role as Sam until I saw the credits. Second, you can explore the entirety of the All Valley in the most recognizable places from the show. You can run through the mini golf arcade where Sam and Miguel had their first date. You could go to Smitty's Diner and bask in the gloriousness and overratedness that was the 80s, while also visiting Johnny and Miguel's apartment complex along the way. You could even go to the West Valley High School staircase where... <laughs> Not only that, but the game has an amazing lineup of bosses chock full of the cast from the show, like Miguel's bully Kyler, the bitchy popular girl Yasmin, and of course the best final boss of the game, John Kreese, who can psycho crush you like MFing Bison. Some boss fights even include characters who've only ever really shown up in a handful of episodes, like Tom Cole, Daniel's auto shop rival, Armand the strip mall's landlord, Sean the delinquent who Robbie fought in Juvie, even the douchey British guy Graham who had one date with Miguel's mom in one episode and... And even Judy, the bitch from the pilot episode. <laughs> oh my god, this game is amazing. And if you're as much of a Cobra Kai fan as I am, you could definitely agree with me that this game incorporates everything the show is and more. Well, that about wraps up everything I can talk about the game. It's time for the final scoring. I give Cobra Kai the game a 7 out of 10. 
Despite me having fun with the game on multiple playthroughs, the consistent jankiness in the gameplay that broke the pacing, as well as the lack of online co-op, really keeps me from rating this game any higher. However, with how much the game incorporates from the show, I still highly recommend anyone who loves Cobra Kai to pick up this game, albeit I recommend finding it on sale. It's not a full price $60 game, but it is $40, which compared to games similar to it in the genre is still too much in my honest opinion. But if you are able to find it at a good price and are even able to find a couch buddy to play it with, I can definitely say you'll have fun either striking first or defending yourself against the dangers that lurk in the All Valley. My name is Muso Prince, and I hope to see you all in my next project. Until then, later guys! Wait, what? They made a sequel for this game? Damn! Well, given how good this game was, I'm sure the sequel probably expands on the- I'm gonna have to review this in the future, aren't I?